Hello, this is Mr. Field, and this is my video on microscopy. Before you watch this video, make sure you're confident with the basics of animal and plant cells, and um, you understand about scale and how to represent numbers in standard form, as both of those things will come up in this video. Now, what we're going to look at today is microscopy, light microscopes and electron microscopes. Then we'll look at how to prepare a slide for a light microscope, followed by the microscope's core practical, um, and then we'll look at how to do calculations involving um, micrographs and things like that. Microscopy. microscopy is using microscopes to produce greatly magnified images of living tissues. Now, this word magnified means that it makes living tissues appear bigger than they really are. Now, um, we've got to be careful about our language a bit here. It's tempting to say that microscopes zoom in on things or make things appear zoomed. Um, we can't use that word zoomed because it is not a scientific word. So make sure we say um, magnified or talk about magnification. Microscopes have enabled us to learn about the inner workings of cells and tissues. And they've contributed hugely to our understanding of biology because all of our cells and the things that they contain are too small to be seen with the naked eye. And so without microscopes, it's really very difficult to learn anything about them. Um, you know, an example is here. So this is a slide of red blood cells, which we cannot see with the naked eye. And we also wouldn't be able to see these darker purple things, which are malaria parasites. And so you can see just from this one image that microscopes allow us to learn a lot about the ways that our bodies and other, other living things work. Now, when we're talking about microscopy, there are a couple of words that are really important. That first word is magnification. This is how many times bigger an object appears than it really is. Is the magnification times 10? So it looks 10 times bigger. Is it times 100? So it looks 100 times bigger. Is it times 1,000? And so on. So magnification is the number of times bigger something appears, and it determines the smallest thing that you can see. So, for example, if we look at this left diagram, this is under low magnification, and we really can't see much in that cell. We can sort of make out the cytoplasm. That black spot, it's reasonable to think, is the nucleus. But beyond that, we really haven't got much idea about what the rest of it is. But under high magnification, we can see much finer de detail. So, for example, we can see these mitochondria, that we couldn't see before. Okay. The second word we've got is the idea of resolution. This is one that is easy to kind of get your head around, but hard to properly kind of pin down, if you know what I mean. So um, we talk about images being low res or high res uh, on our computers or on our phones. And we know that the ones that are low res appear blurry, but what's the actual definition here? So resolution is the closest that two objects can uh, be while still appearing as two separate objects. So this left and right image here are supposed to show the same thing. The left one is low resolution and the right one is high resolution. And what you can see is that on the low resolution, the two points are kind of blurring into one bigger point, whereas on the high resolution one, they appear clearly as two separate objects. Now, this is really important, the resolution, because this determines how clear and detailed an image appears. There's no point having really high magnification and things looking really big if everything also looks really blurry like that and we can't actually work out what it's trying to show us. Now, there are two types of microscope that we need to be familiar with. The first of these is light microscopes. Now, light microscopes, these are the ones that you will have used in your school science lab, or you've certainly seen them, even if you haven't used them. Um, these use visible light and lenses to produce a magnified image. Now, we need to know about these in quite a bit of detail. So let's start at the top and work our way down. The first bit at the top is the eyepiece lens. That's up here. And the eyepiece lens is the part that you look through. That normally has a magnification of times 10. Moving down, we have the coarse and fine adjustment dials. Um, and those are used for focusing the image to produce that nice, crisp, clear image that we need. 
Next, as we move further down, we've got the objective lenses. That's this group of three different lenses there on that rotating nose piece that you are, allows you to select whichever of the lenses you want. Now, there are three different ones. Standard for a secondary school science lab is that one of those, the red one, is normally times four magnification. The yellow one is times 10 magnification. And then the blue one is times 40. It's possible that you've, you've got different ones in whatever you've used at your school, but most schools have that as standard in the UK. Moving further down, we've got the stage and the clips. That's what you can see here. So that is for safely securing the um, microscope slide and holding it in place so that we can study it without it moving around. And then the last bit we've got at the bottom is the light. And um, you can see that yellow light coming up there. That's to illuminate the slide, to make it nice and bright so we can really clearly see all of that detail. So what are the pros and cons of light microscopes? Now, the biggest pro to my mind is that they can be used to view living samples. You know, you could put some sperm cells on a microscope slide and see them swimming around. You could put some bacterial cells on the slide and see them dividing to form new cells. You could put some small invertebrates like water fleas on the slide and you could measure their heart rate. So that's a really big benefit, actually viewing living things in action. Another important benefit is that they're suitable for everyday use. You know, a year seven student with very minimal training is able to successfully view real living cells using a light microscope. The cons, though, big con number one is that they've got limited magnification. Even the very best light microscopes only go up to about 2000 times magnification. The standard ones we use in the school science lab only go up to about times 400 magnification. The other big downside is about having a low resolution. So the images can seem quite blurry. You, if you look at this image here, that is even though it's got a big magnification, it's quite blurry. You can't really see distinct detail. All the different parts of it kind of merge into one another. So the solution for the low resolution and the low magnification of a light microscope is the electron microscope. Electron microscopes use electrons to produce a magnified image. You do not need the detail, but it looks something like this. So there's an electron source, the beam of electrons passes through a couple of lenses um, and it hits the sample and reflects off the sample and gets collected by a couple of different detectors. You won't be asked the details, but it's helpful to have a basic idea of what electron microscopes do. Now, there are two types of electron microscope. The first is a tunneling microscope. Now, these have got huge magnification, up to a million times magnification and excellent resolution as well. For example, this image down here from a tunneling microscope shows individual HIV viruses. These are far too small to be seen with any light microscope, but a tunneling microscope gives us these really clear images. The other um, type is called a scanning electron microscope. And although these don't have such high magnification, they only go to 30,000 times, still way better than a light microscope, but not as good as a tunneling one. Um, they have what we call a big depth of field. So that can produce images that show the three dimensional aspect of the things they're viewing. So if we look at this scanning electron micrograph of a flea, you can see some aspect of the kind of three dimensional nature of the flea in that image. Now, the big benefits of the electron microscopes is that they've got huge magnification and excellent resolution. They are simply unrivaled in both those departments. The big downside, though, is that they only work in a vacuum, so they cannot view any living samples. We can't see cell division. We can't see sperm swimming around. We can't measure water flea heartbeats because only dead samples can be viewed. The other aspect is there's no natural color as well. So this image here, it does have some color, but that's artificial color added by the computer to help make it easier to see the different parts of the image. It's not the real color of the actual sample. Now, coming back to light microscopes, how do we prepare a microscope slide? The first thing to do is we put our sample 
on the slide. And we can see there, there's a little sample of cells placed on that microscope slide. Then what we do is we add a stain. Now a stain is a colored liquid that shows up the detail. The common one that we use in uh, school is iodine. Another common one you might meet is methylene blue. Now, they're different stains, but they both have the same job. They stick more to some structures in the cell than to others, and that allows us to show the detail more clearly. Then what we do is we put a cover slip on our slide, that little protective thin glass uh, sheet there, and we put the slide on the stage and we secure it in place with the clips that are there to make sure it doesn't move around. Then what we do is we select the objective lens that we want to use. Do we use the times four, the times 10, or the times 40 lens? Then looking through the eyepiece lens up here, we uh, turn the coarse adjustment, uh, the coarse focus dial to produce a blurry image. And then we use the fine focus dial to produce a crisp and clearly focused image. So this leads us on to the idea of the microscopy core practical. Now in this core practical, what we were doing was using a light microscope to view cells and subcellular structures for a range of different samples. Now our method, first thing we did was we put each of these different slides onto the microscope uh, stage. So the first one was a pre-prepared slide um, of just some cells that um, were given to you by your teacher. Then we would have looked at a slide made from some cheek cells. So what we did was rub a cotton wool bud around the inside of our cheek or a Q-tip if you're watching this from the States. Um, and then we added some stain to that. In this case, it was methylene blue stain. And here you can actually see an image of my very own um, cheek cells produced in this method. And you can definitely see some detail, can't you? You can see, for example, there that we've got the nucleus of the cell. We can see little speckles in the cytoplasm as well. The next one we did was some onion skin cells. These were stained with iodine stain and it produced a micrograph that looked like that. You can clearly see those thick lines representing the cell walls and you can see little dots for the nuclei of each of those cells. And lastly, we should have used some pond weed as well, a little two by two millimeter square stained with iodine again. Now, what we did then was we focused each of our slides using the method outlined on the previous slide. And we used the times four, the times 10 and the times 40 lenses. And we drew scientific diagrams of what you could see. Finally, making sure we labeled any cell parts that we could identify. And for the most part, that was really just the nucleus the cytoplasm, and in the case of the um, onion cells, the cell walls as well. In terms of results then, what we should have seen was that under greater magnification, we could see more detail more clearly. Okay, the last section of this um, video looks at a couple of the different calculations that we need to do around the magnification uh, of light microscopes. Now, the first type of calculation is quite easy. Um, it's just to calculate the magnification based on the choice of lenses that we've used. And the magnification of the lenses is the magn magnification of the objective lens multiplied by the magnification of the eyepiece lens. And as standard in our school, um, secondary school um, uh, light microscopes, our magnification will be multiplied by 10. So let's have a look. If we've got the times four objective lens, then our magnification will be four multiplied by the 10 for the eyepiece to give me times 40 as our lowest magnification. If we've got the times 10 objective lens, then we'll do 10 for the objective lens times the 10 for the eyepiece to give me times 100 magnification. And if we use the most powerful objective lens, the times 40, we'll do 40 times our 10 for the eyepiece to give me times 400 magnification there. Now, the other kind of calculation is to be able to do calculations involving micrographs. That is the microscope images um, that are produced when we look through the uh, eyepiece lens. Now, the calculation we need here is this. 
is that the actual size of something that we view through the microscope is the measured size divided by the magnification. So what we'll look at on the next couple of slides is a few examples of that in practice. Okay, so example one, what is the actual diameter of the nucleus in this image in micrometers? Now, this is a standard kind of question. You're given a photograph of a microscope slide and you're asked to find the size of some part of it. Um, in this case, our slide is of a cheek cell. We're told that it's got a 1,500 magnification and we're asked to find the diameter of that nucleus, that dark blue spot in the middle there. So how do we go about this? Well, the first thing to do is to write down our equation because that's always helpful. Um, so the actual size of a microscope uh, or, or, or an object under a microscope, the actual size is the measured size divided by the magnification. Okay, now the magnification is given to us and it would be given to you in the exam as well. So that's easy, we just divide something by 1,500. But what is this measured size? Well, the, the measured size is the actual diameter of that um, nucleus on that image that you can see and the only way to find that is to break your ruler out and to measure it and if we do that we find that the actual diameter of that so the, the measured diameter of that nucleus is 15 millimeters so I'm going to put 15 here divided by a thousand uh, but divided by 1500 gives me 0 0.01 millimeters as my actual size however the question's asking you to give it in micrometers. So we need to remember that there are 1,000 micrometers in one millimeter, and therefore we need to times that value by 1,000 to give me 10 micrometers as my final answer. Now, it's possible some of you are sat there panicking, thinking, oh my word, I'm really rubbish at measuring things with a ruler. Um, I'm never going to get this right. Don't worry. With these kind of questions, you're always given some leeway. So, for example, if this was a real exam question, I imagine they would allow you um, to get measurements anywhere between about 13 and about 17 millimetres, um, and you'd still get full marks for it. So don't worry if your answer differs slightly to mine. Um, so long as you're close enough, you'll still get the marks. Okay, example two. In this one, we're going to have to work backwards a little bit. Um, so we're told that the actual height of the highlighted palisade cell is 80 micrometers and we're being asked to find what is the magnification. Now to start it's always helpful to write out the equation that you're going to use because that can help you to see what you need to do. So in this case our equation is actual size equals the measured size divided by the magnification. Okay, now what is our actual size? Our actual is 80 micrometers. That was given to us in the question. And the measured size, similar to the last example, we're going to need to um, break out our ruler again. And if we do that, it's this cell here that we're measuring. If we do that, we find that that cell is 40 millimeters on our image. Now, you might be able to see the problem we've got here. We've got 80 micrometers and 40 millimeters. So we need to convert the units. It doesn't matter which way round. We could turn the micrometers into millimeters or the millimeters into micrometers. It doesn't matter which we do. Um, I'm going to convert the micrometers into millimeters just to give you experience of doing the opposite um, conversion. So to convert micrometers into millimeters, we divide by a thousand because there are a thousand micrometers in one millimeter, and that gives me a value of 0 0.08 millimeters. So now I can substitute the 0 0.08 and the 40 into my answer. So the actual size, 0 0.08, equals the measured size, 40 divided by the magnification. I'm just going to write mag for short. Okay. 
So now I need to rearrange. Now this is always the hardest rearrangement to do, but we can shortcut it because when you when your desired term or when your desired subject is on the bottom of the fraction like that, you can just swip swap. So we do that swip swap there. We swap the mag and the 0 0.08. So we end up with magnification equals 40 divided by 0 0.08. And that gives me an answer of times 500 magnification. Okay, so that's it. The end. As always, thank you for listening and well done if you got this far.